So today I'm going to take a look at a program called FX, which describes itself as a JSON viewer, but that is a massive understatement for what this application is capable of doing. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it will really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So this is the GitHub page for FX. So to install it, it's very, very simple. So it is a NPM application, so we're gonna install it with NPM. So you can also install it with Brew or you can download it with curl, I guess, if you wanna do it like that. So to just install it like that, we'll do sudo npm install dash g and the name of the program, FX. So I've already got it installed, so this will just take a couple moments to try to update it, and there we go. So if you don't have it installed, it'll take a bit longer than that, but shouldn't take too long. So what does this application actually do? So right here, it's got the basic usage of it, and we're gonna go over that first off, and then I'm gonna show you why this is way, way more than just a JSON viewer. Okay, so let's bring up a terminal and I'll show you what I mean. So the basic use of the application is like this. So we run FX and we can pass a JSON file into it. So I've just got this file called example.json, which is, if you recognize the layout for it, it is a React build script. Anyway, that's not too, or it's a React package file. So that's not too important though. So we can click on any of these triple dots in here and oh, if I zoom in, it actually does break the program, which is interesting. I haven't ever seen anything that does that. But yeah, anyway, not too important. Just don't zoom in when you've got it open. So if I press any of these three dots in here with my cursor, I think, yeah, you can actually move it around like this as well. So I'm using Vim keys here. So if I go up and down with J and K, I can do that. If you press L, that'll expand that out. If you press H, I assume, yep, that'll close it. I was actually just using the mouse the entire time, but I guess you can use Vim keys as well. So that's cool. Can you use arrow keys? Yeah, okay, so the arrow keys also function exactly the same way that you'd expect them to up and down to go up and down, right to expand, left to close. Okay, so that will let you actually view the content. So what if we don't want to just click on stuff to view it? What if we want to view stuff in another way? So we actually can do that. So let's say we want to look at what's in this scripts here. We can write dot and this brings up a completion prompt. So in here it shows us everything that's available. I assume that if you have enough things in there it'll start cutting stuff off. I haven't run into any files big enough to do that yet but I've only been playing around with very very small files. So let's say we wanted to look at this scripts in here. Press enter on that and bam, it auto completes it for us. So that's really nice. And then we can look at any of these specific ones. So let's say we just wanna look at start for example, we can press dot again and that will then auto complete for that. So let's say we wanna just look at build. There we go, that takes us back to that. So if we delete stuff out, then it will take us up a level and there's another thing you can do in here. So this just uses the normal JavaScript syntax. So if you've ever worked with that, then you'll be very familiar with how this works. So let's say we wanna look at the browsers list instead now. So we go to that one, that didn't bring it up. Okay, I don't know what happened there. But as we can see in here, with the square brackets, this is an array. So let's say we just wanna look at one of the contents of the array. So you can't just use the dot syntax for this you have to use the angle or angle brackets, the square brackets. So let's say we wanted to look at, not not dead, that's not how that works, you use a index. So JavaScript and JSON arrays are indexed from zero. So let's say we, we want to look at this second option. So we put in one here, close that, and there we go, now we've got this. So if there was an object in here, we could then also use the dot syntax to go further and further into the object. So I think you can also do, yeah, yeah. So just doing the dot will basically replace this in here. So you don't have to put this in, in case, if you've never worked with JavaScript, basically this is the keyword you use to refer to the current object. So this is completely optional, basically. That's a very confusing way of describing that. I'm, I don't have a better way of doing it. Anyway, let's quit out of this. How do I do that? I actually don't know. Okay, Q works sometimes. Under certain occasions, it won't work. I think I was 
still focused on the search field. But anyway, as I said, that is just the JSON viewer part. But there is far, far more you can do with this program. So let's have a quick look at the GitHub page. I'll zoom in on this a bit so you have a better look. So we can pass in files from curl. So if you pull down from some web page, you want to pass that directly into FX. That's an option. You can pass multiple files in at once, but this is where it gets really interesting. So you can run just JavaScript functions on it, which is in actually really powerful. So let's say we wanted to do this here. So let's try with our example we just had. So I had a, another example in a previous terminal. Let's see if I can find it. Cause this is just a pain to get working. I think this is the one that works. Yeah, okay. So right here, we are catting the example.json into FX. You might be able to, let's find out. I actually don't know if you can just pass the file in directly. I haven't tried that. Maybe you can, maybe that cat is completely useless. Example.json. Yes, it was completely useless. Lucky I caught that. Okay, so we're running FX on example.json and then we're running this JavaScript function. So dot browsers list. So if you remember, we had that array in the file called browsers list and then we are running the filter function on it. So filter will basically search for anything that returns true with this anonymous function that we have in here. So basically what this is doing is it's searching for any strings that start with the letter N. So we can do that for something else. Like let's say we want to search for dead. That will bring up nothing because there are no strings in here that start with dead. But I think there's a contains function as well. I can't remember. It's been a little while since I've played around with the JavaScript functions like that. But that's really useful and it doesn't stop there. So that's just the vanilla JavaScript stuff. You can bring in external libraries as well. So in here, it's got an example of working with, ooh, my chair was slightly off center. It's got an example of working with Lodash. So in here, it's already got them pre-imported using the FXRC file. So if we have a look at this, my right click's not working for a second. Okay, sure. I should have just grabbed my mouse. So if we look at this, Basically, within your home directory, you can define a .fxrc file, and then, like you would do within JavaScript, you can import this actual module or this library, and then you can actually refer to these functions within FX, and that is absolutely insane. So you can bring in other stuff like JSONator and whatever you want to do to do JSON querying and JSON searching and stuff like that. And obviously JSON filtering, that is absolutely insane. So if you wanna just filter JSON files without having to go through the hassle of actually creating a project for them, you can actually use something like this to modify your JSON. Obviously you're not gonna be using this a lot and pretty much the main thing you're gonna be using it for will be for doing something like say viewing JSON. But I think that having that option there is actually really, really cool. So you can do some other stuff with this. I'm not gonna go through everything because there's just way too much to do with this program. And honestly, I, I don't even feel like most of it's useful, but <laughs> I think it's cool nonetheless. So here's an example in here. So we can actually echo some JSON string into FX and then run a function on it. So if we run this one here, Let's just have a look at what that will do. So I will explain this because I'm not gonna assume that everyone has a good understanding of JavaScript. So this is basically a JSON object. So it's an object that contains a key that says foo. For that key, it has a value, which is an array of an object, which has a key, which has the value bar. Hopefully that made sense. It made sense in my head, but obviously if you haven't done much JSON, then it probably might seem a bit confusing. And then what we're doing in here is we're running this anonymous function on it. So we're basically saying, get the value of foo at index zero, and then get the value of bar. So this will basically print out value in this case. It probably shouldn't have used the foo bar example for that, but sure. So you can actually do the JSON searching from the terminal if you'd rather do that rather than doing what we did before where you can actually do the exact same stuff within 
this program here. So what that was doing just there was the exact same stuff we could do in here where we go like browsers list at index zero, basically. So you don't have to do the anonymous function in that full form. It does the automatic binding for you. So you don't even have to use this in this case. You can just use dot, which is what we were using previously. So if you want to send some JSON into FX and then all you want it to do is format it and like give it nice highlighting and stuff, you can use this. So we run this command. So basically this will print out this JSON object into FX. Then you just do the dot option and that will just say, do nothing but highlight it and format it. So we run that and we get that. So what if we wanted to do something else? So let's say instead of doing it on that, we wanted to just format the example.json file. So we can do it like this. We run that and all it does is format it. So if you wanted to use this for say, your terminal file manager or something, and you wanted to have this sort of JSON formatting with this sort of coloring, then you can do it with this program. I'm currently using highlight to do my JSON formatting, but I might switch over to this. I don't really have any reason to do it or to not do it. It's kind of just whether I feel like doing it. So you can actually chain these commands. So instead of saying you want to do x.foo.this index zero, blah, 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 blah. You can do all of these as separate things. So if we run this one, I'll actually show you what it looks like in pieces. So you can actually get an example of what it's doing. So this will just print out value. So what if we were to get rid of this, this dot bar part? So we'll see that this will now print the object that has the key bar and the value value, value value. That's confusing. So now we get rid of this last part or this second to last part. And this will now print out just the array that has the object that has the key bar and the value zero. Value, zero value value. Why does I say value zero? You can see what's on the screen. So hopefully <laughs> ignore what I'm saying if I say something that makes literally zero sense. So you can use the spread operator like you could in JavaScript. So what's the best way to describe the spread operator? It's a way to update a array by saying, here's the array, put this onto the end of it. I think that's a good way of saying it. So you also have the option of editing a file in place. This is a horrendous example. So I'm gonna try to step through it and explain what it's actually doing. So I have slightly modified it just so it fits with my data, but it's pretty much the same example. So the only difference is that I've removed this last part here. So what this is doing is it's saying, fx the example.json file and then run this on it. So what we're doing is we're taking the spread operator. So we're taking all of this file. We are saying, keep that the same and then stick this on the end. So the thing we're sticking on the end is count. And just for this example, because I was testing it off camera, we'll set the count to two. And then if we pass in the save option, that'll basically say, save these changes to the file. So we do that. And as we can see, this count value down here is now set to two. So now what is this last part doing here? So basically that's just what we were doing before where we can just filter out the data we want to see. So if we do dot count, all that will show instead of showing the entire file is just the result of count. So we do that and now it says the value of count is set to two. So let's see, this is just going into looking into packages. So I'm not gonna go over this because it's basically just how to install packages and then stick them in your FXRC, which I went over previously. I'm not gonna go over how to install packages. That's more of an NPM thing. Then we've also got some stuff with JSONator, which is also more stuff that's not too important to this video and formatting. So that looks to be basically everything. All of this is just different sort of examples of the same stuff that we've gone over. And then we've got the hotkeys in here as well. Okay, so there's some other stuff in here. So you can expand the entire file. Let's actually bring up that example again. fx example.json. Okay, so if we go uh, E, that will expand everything. We go capital E, that will collapse everything. So we can see what that does in here. So scroll to the top. I don't have a ton of stuff in here, but so yeah, it can't actually scroll 
But if you did have stuff that went off of the screen, then I guess you'd be able to, to actually scroll. You can also do a search. So if we want to search for name, that will just work the same way that a search would work in something like less or anything else you're used to doing a search with. And obviously you can cycle through that with N. Is there a way to cycle backwards? Maybe not. I don't know. It doesn't look like it. We can press P and that will print the JSON to standard out. So that's similar to what we were doing where we were doing fx example dot json and then dot. That does the exact same stuff. The capital P option will do the fully expanded version. Actually, that's the thing we have where we just put in the dot. This will print out whatever we have on the screen currently. So if we don't have everything expanded, it won't have everything expanded. But the dot option and the capital P letter will print out everything already expanded. And that's just an example of how regexes work. You may find that sometimes on a really big JSON file, FX prints an error message like this. So fatal error, JavaScript heap out of memory. V8 limits memory usage to around two gigabytes by default. You can increase the limit by putting this line in your dot profile. If you're going over two gigabytes with a JSON file, I'm really worried for that file. You, I, I guess there's plenty of ways you could do that, but you probably shouldn't be trying to manually filter it if you've got that much data. But I don't know, I guess you feel like doing that, so go right ahead and do it. So I reckon that's pretty much everything for this video. So if you liked this video, remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you've got any other like JSON viewers or JSON processors, let me know. I've got another one called... I think JQ in my list, and I might go over that as well at some point. So if you've got anything else, let me know and I'll be happy to look at them. So if you want to see those videos when they come out, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist there's videos in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my Discord. So if you want to chat with me, I'm in there most days. So... Just send me a message and I'll probably respond at some point. I've also got my library, so if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, that's the best place to go. Right now, I don't have videos on any other platforms besides YouTube and library, but that might change going to 2020. Unless, actually, this video will be out in 2020. That might change some point over this year. We'll see what I decide. Down below, I've also got my support link. So if you'd like to support the channel, that's the best place to do it. Obviously, don't feel pressured to do that. My videos will remain available for free. But if you do want to support the channel, your help will be really appreciated. So lastly, I've got my Twitter and my Mastodon. So if you want to see video updates, because YouTube can't be trusted to actually push them to anyone, those are the best places to go for those. And they'll be up just five minutes after the video comes out. So if you're following those accounts, you'll see them pretty quickly. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.